Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Synth Stuff. Today we're going to be talking about panning uh, in the stereo field, but not your traditional panning left-right. We're going to get more into binaural and ambient panning with, and talk about a free plugin that lets you do this stuff. Coming up next. <music> So it's great having all these synths here and I can play, uh... oh, actually, uh, the Summit sound that I, the patch I have on there, uh, total tangent here, but uh, the other day, Paulo at uh, Synth Mania posted a patch that he had created on his OBXA that was a uh, talk talk sound, and I thought, hey, I could do that on the Summit, so here's my version of it. And I think if you know talk talk, you'll know that sound and you'll know what song that's from. I was thinking of maybe doing a series on sound design of uh, classic 80s sounds, uh, songs like that. If that's something you might be interested in uh, hearing about and how you can actually create those types of sounds on various different, different synthesizers, uh, leave me a comment in the uh, discussion section below. Okay, on with the stereo panning. Panning, typically you have a sound that's in the center or you can move it more in one ear or the other and it adjusts where that sound sounds in the stereo field. Um, that's not really a realistic way of doing it. It makes it so maybe you have all the sound coming out of one speaker, and if you're in a room, then maybe it represents it that it moves the instrument that you're hearing a little more to one side. But particularly when you're wearing earphones or headphones, it sounds artificial because you've only got it coming out of one ear, and that's not how we hear things. If you're in a room, you don't hear something coming only in one ear. If it's over here on your left, then it, it reverberates around the room and you actually hear it with both ears. Maybe one ear hears different reflections or different timing than the other ear, and that's how your brain knows, hey, the sound is over there, but you're not just hearing it on one side. So panning things is really an artificial way of doing that. With Dolby Atmos processing like we have in Cubase 12, with the power of processors today, you can simulate that delay and reflection and actually move sounds around. So you could have your mix where you have this instrument is six feet up and over here. This is, instrument is down below me and it's gonna be behind me. And it will actually do all the calculations required to actually make that happen so that the sounds appear in the sound field. And then it will mix it down into two channels that you can hear. But you don't need to spend all that money on Cubase Pro to get that effect. In fact, you don't need to spend any money at all. There's a VST plugin that for free made by Sennheiser and it's called Ambio Orbit and it lets you move the sound on the track on which it's installed anywhere in the sound field. 360 degrees, up, down, adjust the room size, reflectivity, all that stuff, and it's free. Over here, you can just barely see in the picture here, I have the JD800. <laughs> So I just picked a few cool sounding sounds out of the JD-800 and recorded a really quick and dirty little track in Cubase to do this demonstration. Let's have a look. So here's my track, it's very simple. We have bass, pads, and a plucky sound. So if we listen to the bass over here. A very simple bass sound. Okay, and then we'll go back and listen to the pads. Very nice, and we will go and listen to the plucky sound. And then all together. All right, so you hear the plucking sound is right in the very center. So let's play that and listen to the pluck as I pan it left and right. Okay, so now you hear it's far in the right, which sounds unnatural because things don't actually work that way. Now that I brought the sound back to the center, let's bring up that Ambio Orbit plugin and I'll let you hear exactly what this thing does. So here's the plugin. And as you can see, it's, it's very simple. You have several different controls. Elevation changes the apparent height, so it's either higher up or lower down. The azimuth changes where in the spectrum it actually is going to appear. 
you can change the type of room and you can change the size and reflection level. Clarity is the overall amount of processing to how clear the sound actually is and the width I'll talk about in just a moment. So let's first listen to the sound in isolation and hear what this thing actually does. <laughs> So as you can tell, it's actually move things, moving the sound apparently around your head. You can really hear this if you're listening to this in a pair of headphones. So if you have headphones, I, I really suggest you listen to it using those. But it's doing that not by panning it left and right, but by actually changing the, the apparent reflections of the sound. So if I adjust the room, let's make it a small closet with almost no reflections. And you can hear it's still rotating it around us, but not panning it. I can change the width. So let's bring it back to, say, a drywall. A little more reflective, a larger room. You can make it very reflective with a huge room. Now you get all kinds of reflections. Let's bring it back to a brick wall of a smaller size. Now, if you'll notice, we have a curve here, and that represents the size of the actual apparent sound source. So if I change that to wide, it makes it sound like it's coming from a larger area. If I bring it down to the zero, it makes it sound like it's coming from a point. Now listen if I open up the width. It's a much larger sound source. I can also move the elevation so it sounds like it's coming from high up or down ear level or down on the floor. Now let's, let's do it in context. And of course, if we want to, we can record this as automation. And that way, when we play it back, we hear that automation change. So as you can see, just by using this simple free little plugin, you can really give sounds a lot of space and movement in your mix. And you don't have to actually rotate it around your head like I was doing there. I was just doing that as a demonstration. If you wanted just to have your guitar over on the left a little bit, but you just don't want to pan it there, you can actually move it in space inside the mix that way. And you could have multiple instances of this Ambio Orbit uh, on different tracks that have different sounds. So you can move sounds all around your mix inside a virtual room, which is really cool. You can also uh, automate any of those parameters. So if you want to have the thing rotating around your head, you can actually automate that and record that in your DAW. So as it's playing, it's rotating, rotating a sound around your head. I actually use that a lot. I have a couple of tracks where I have sounds that continuously rotate slowly around your head. And I usually time it so that it's... Uh, maybe four bars for a full trip around your head. And it just gives your track a little bit of motion and keeps it from sounding stale and, and listless. I have to thank Andrew Hyang for the idea of this because he actually did something on stereo fields and he literally talked about the exact same thing, how you do, don't really want to pan things around uh, because it sounds artificial. Now, his idea was something else that I've used before where you take... Um, filters and you take like two comb filters and you make a single sound and pull the individual parts of it apart so that 
uh, each channel has different frequency parts of that sound and it widens the sound, gets it out of the center of your mix and, and you can change that and give your sound some motion without just panning it out one way or the other. So this is a really fantastic mixing tool for your tracks, give your tracks some life and of course you can't beat the price. That's a quick dirty video for you today. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, please click like, subscribe, click that little bell down below. It really helps us out when you do that. And if you have any comments or questions or suggestions or corrections, please leave them in the comment section below. I read all the comments. Thanks for watching.